wise man. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my house to, to film this today. Your humble abode. Have a conversation about songwriting. Oh, of course, I love your house. You know, it's 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 just so fun to be able to sing a song with you after having collaborated for so many years mm-hmm. on a songwriting level to to sing a song with you as as an artist. I always notice us both like looking up at, at the other like, oh my God, what's <laughs> happening? Just... I know. I've known you so long and you knew like very thick eyeliner, probably 21 year old Emily. And so <laughs> you like, <laughs> it's just so funny when we're singing it and I'm like, me and Ross are singing a love song right now and it's kind of weird. You know, it's funny. <laughs> I do know that, that Emily, I feel like I've been with you you know There's me so many time. stages of, of your life from when you just you moved to town. And I always do love how personal you are about songwriting. And you're always just pulling from those real life situations. How do you feel like the pandemic changed the way you write songs? Um, and that's like a real question. But like Zoom know, became a thing. And Zoom it changed the way thing. you were able to vibe out. Like we used to vibe yeah, out. Yeah, we used to vibe out. You'd put your microphone on. And we were on headphones. I would sing. And I used to we'd write a song a lot of the time on headphones. On, he- on the mic. Exactly. We probably did this one like that. It was we, probably I think just we did, like, yeah. And so on Zoom, like you, you kind of lost that capability. How did, yeah. But I, and I know Zoom is kind of not a thing as much anymore, but that was a year and a half of where that was kind of the thing. Yeah. I think, but. And I want you to answer the same question for yourself. I want to hear where you're coming from on that. But for me, I mean, pandemic changed a lot more than just how I write songs, I think. Wow. Um, I moved to Nashville and it was like starry eyes. I'm going to make it in Nashville. Like I always say this, anyone who watches videos of me talking about anything, they've heard me say this before, but... I think you have to be a little psycho to move to a town like Nashville and think it's actually going to happen for you. Mm. There's thousands of people moving here so like every day so <laughs> to do what we are semi-successfully doing. So I don't really know what I was thinking moving here, but I obviously had some kind of gusto in me and these starry eyes that just kind of went like, wow, I'm going to go to Nashville and blah, blah, blah. And from the day one of my feet landed in Nashville, my whole life is about making my dream come true. Sure. Writing, yeah. meeting people, like... And that all went away for that year and a half. Well, yeah, I mean, I grinded hard for, like, six or seven years. Music just became who I was, and sure. the pandemic was, this is no longer, this no longer defines your That's so, identity. That is so interesting You know, to say that. it was like, yeah. there's 24 hours in a day, Wow. I'm only writing for two of them now yes. because you get on Zoom. You don't really talk that much on Zoom. So true. You just write. Wow. You get off Zoom and then you have 22 hours left in the day. You can't go to a bar and meet somebody. You can't go to the studio and do whatever there. I can't go take meetings with whoever. Sure. I can't go build my reputation today. Sure. So like, who am I outside of the two hours a day I'm writing? Like if... It's just a thing you do and a thing you enjoy doing. Yes. It does not need to be I started right. hating music, honestly. Yeah. Especially with the transition artists, which we'll get into, I'm sure. During the pandemic, you hated, you were hating it? Oh, I started hating music before pandemic. Yeah. Because it, it started defining, like, it, when it starts becoming your well-being, the thing that pays so for your true. life. Even when you start making money, it's like, now I have to upkeep this lifestyle. What if I can't upkeep the lifestyle? What if so I have true. a bad year or a bad three years or a bad four years? Isn't that funny? Music it's, is such no a personal guarantees. thing. There's just no guarantees. Yeah, there's yeah. just no guarantees. You never know what's going to yeah. happen. Like, And then you start creating out of this place of pressure rather than pure love. I just say all that to say, after a year and a half, two years of us not being able to do music in the way we've always been able to do it, music is... There was this pe- there's this pedestal in my heart and music used to be on it and it's kind of off of it now. And that breaks my heart in a lot of ways. Sure. Um, it's hard for me moving forward in my career, like what kind of business decisions do I want to make for something that I'm not as like starry eyed and thirsty for because that came off the pedestal in my heart and then all of a sudden it was like, what kind of sister am I? What kind of friend am I? What kind of girlfriend am I? Oh, I'm not a good girlfriend because music I've never left been... space in my heart yeah. to be able to have an actually healthy relationship and 
if I did have a healthy relationship, I'd throw it away because that sure. doesn't that's bad for business. I'm not writing great breakup so songs true. when wow. I'm in a healthy relationship. Wait, go, go back vulnerable. to you real quick though. How did you, how did pandemic change the way that you write? Well, I I embraced the Zoom thing since I have a family. So I, you was, you love Zoom. Dude. It was nice. You love Zoom. <laughs> it was nice. I was worried for a minute that you were never going to write in person ever again because you <laughs> love you had I love Zoom vibes. The reason I, I have to get <laughs> I I like writing in person again is is be writing with people like you that I feel like you get to be your best when vibe, we're in the yeah. room together. Mm -hmm. I'm on the side that I have the microphone, so I can kind of control more like what the song is like because I have yeah. the microphone and the and the Pro Tools and the whole thing. So it's harder right. being on the other side of that mm -hmm. to be like, hey, can you make it sound like this? Through you know, so in person, there's nothing that compares to that. So mm -hmm. I, yeah, what brings you the most joy or in music when you put a song out yourself? When you write a song and somebody else sings it? When I get a what, demo back. When you it's get a demo back. Sick. That's what brings you the most joy. Yeah, it's my mountain top moment. Somebody told me that years ago, back when, in a hundred billion years ago, when I won a Grammy, they, I was, it was so fun for like a week. And then I was just had this intense anxiety that it was never going to happen again. I remember you talking about that. Yeah. I feel like I did vent to you about that one day. Yeah. And it was just this, like, I now felt like I had this new thing to live up to that I didn't feel worthy of or capable of. Wow. And... Nobody put that on me. I put that on me. You it's imposter I mean? syndrome. But it's the nature, it, which is like major imposter syndrome. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, I was I was I was went to dinner with somebody, and I was telling them that, and they were like, "Em, you got to find your mountaintop moment, because like the Grammys ain't it. Like wow. number ones ain't it." Thank you for coming and having this conversation. This has been like... Oh my like... gosh, of course. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I just want anyone watching this conversation to know I yeah. love music. There is true wrestling that happens absolutely and this is real this is like the real this thing real. and like honestly like i've had people in my life be like hey don't maybe don't get mad in front of just you know you're in a good like show your good place and no yes this stuff is if i'm not angry about it i don't care about it so true i'm angry I love about that. it i'm angry that this did not go the way i thought it was gonna go sure i'm mad about it sure i'm gonna say that it's like something I need to wrestle through. Beauty's gonna come out of that. Do you feel like it artists like Taylor Swift and other like these other are they wrestling with these things with different expectations? Like she gets mad that it didn't do reach this 100%. goal. Yeah. So I was talking to It's all yeah. I was talking to an artist a couple of weeks ago who's like a big pop artist and she was like bummed about her last record. Yeah. And in my eyes, her last record, I wish my project did what yeah. her last record It's just did. expectations. You know it's what I mean? It's like, yeah. well, it's just like, I think John Mayer said this and I love it. Humans were not created to be famous. We don't do well with it. Jim Carrey talks about that too. Yeah, we just don't do well with it. Music will invade your boundaries like so fast. Every one of them. I mean, you have exes writing with each other. <sighs> uh, yeah. You know, like, or you're... Writing with your ex's new wife. I write in your ex's studio. So like you're yeah. in a studio that like you had history in. Yeah. So that, if I come to write with you, I will yeah. be writing in a studio that I spent three years of my life. Yes. Being emotional with my that's, boyfriend in. And that's so interesting. That's such a weird thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, and my boyfriend who's not in music is going to be like, oh yeah, you're going to your ex's studio filled with memories today. Like, wow. Oh, filled with memories. That's crazy. You know what I mean though? Like it, he's the, he doesn't have an issue with that. And sure. He's never mentioned that. I'm just sure. saying, like, Julie also Michaels, dating we, someone yeah. not in music has made me go, oh, that's weird. I guess that's not normal. Yes. I'm still writing about my exes from high school. Sometimes I'm not in love with my ex from high school. You're just pulling on that. But yeah. it's yeah, our job is to take these experiences and and honestly, we we just are like, what can we use for yeah. a song? You know what I mean? But like yeah. when my boyfriend, who's in medical sales. And is not in the music industry. Here's me writing a song about my ex. At first, we've been together a while now, so now, he, I mean, we're on the same page. But at first, it was like, do you still like him? <laughs> it's like, sure. No. But then you realize, like, wow, this is really boundaryless. This is not yeah. normal. My kids saw our music video and they were like, Dad, do you have a crush on her? <laughs> 
I was like, no! this is a weird thing to explain it's to my weird. kids. Yeah. It's weird. Like, yeah. This is acting. Because music like is active. such an emotional. Like, I go to the studio and I spend five hours of my day getting emotional with another man. It's boundaryless. Yes. And then it affects your values so much. It's a boundaryless. Yeah. It's about boundaries. It's beautiful. We just nail it. I'm we not just... saying it's not beautiful. It's yeah. the most gorgeous. I'm obsessed with it. Yeah. Like, we're living the so absolute blessed. dream. So blessed. Yes. But it it's a double-edged sword in so 100%. many ways. And I, I don't know that, you know, I think it's healthy to get real about that so that Absolutely. we can continue to grow in our craft with this healthy mindset of like, because it's what this you love. is what we do. We love doing it. We're honored to do it. But like, does it you get define? To do it. We get yeah. to do it. But it's not who you are. But no, it's just like, a part of you. Yeah. Emily, you're amazing. You're amazing. Thank you for having this open, raw are you conversation. Me? This, this is, so is like, we this were is worried real. we wouldn't have anything to talk about. No. <laughs>